simply allow your experience to be as it is from moment to moment. If we allow experience to be as it is, experience leaves us to be as we are. Simply notice the fact of being aware that lies, so to speak, in the background of experience. The fact of being aware is not separate from anything that takes place in experience. But nor is it identical with or attached to anything that takes place in experience. It is as such both utterly intimate with all experience and at the same time completely free from all experience. In fact, the fact of being aware or awareness itself doesn't really lie behind experience any more than a screen lies behind an image. But just as it is legitimate for one who is lost in the content of a movie to suggest, to begin with, that the screen lies behind it, so for one who is lost in the content of experience, it is legitimate to begin with, to suggest that their essential nature of simply being aware or pure awareness lies behind experience. In doing so, we draw attention to the fact that there is something that knows our experience which is not itself an experience. Something out of which the movie is made, which does not appear as an object in the movie. It would be more accurate, but of course not completely accurate, to suggest that the fact of being aware or the presence of awareness is more like the space out of which a hologram is made and in which a hologram appears. The space is utterly, intimately one with the content of the hologram, but it is not qualified, conditioned or limited by it. It is free or independent. hologram is a temporary colouring of the space that itself 
has no colour. Likewise, rather than suggesting that the fact of being aware or the presence of awareness lies behind experience, it would be more accurate to suggest that it is the medium within which all experience appears, intimately pervading every aspect of it. but at the same time free or independent of it. Just choose whichever of these two analogies not only makes sense to you intellectually, but takes you to, the, to your essential nature, the fact of being aware or the presence of awareness understand, but more importantly feel yourself as the screen-like presence of awareness behind all experience or the space-like presence of awareness within which all experience takes place. understand and feel yourself to be this transparency this openness this aware emptiness Notice that it is not necessary to do anything to become this transparency, this openness, this aware emptiness. It is just a matter of noticing, a matter of recognition, not a matter of becoming. What is, the, what is the nature of this openness other than that it is present and aware? It is the constant factor in all changing experience. It does not need to be manufactured or maintained. For one who is lost in or identified with the content of experience, it may seem at least to begin with, that some effort is required to trace our way back to this openness, our essential self. And then through force of habit, we will lose ourselves again in the content of experience. So this back and forth between the foreground of experience and the background of ourself will, to begin with, require some effort. But in time, it becomes clear that this Transparency, this openness, 
is what we are. It is not a place in ourself that we visit from time to time. We begin to be established in it and as it. We begin to realize that it is our unnatural condition. And by the same token, we realize that to be lost in or identified with the content of experience, which previously seemed to be our natural condition or our natural state, is now seen to require a subtle effort or activity of thinking and feeling. This presence of awareness that we essentially are is open without resistance to all experience irrespective of its content. It says yes, so to speak, indiscriminately to all experience, just as the space of a room indiscriminately allows all kinds of objects and activities to exist and take place within it. I do not mean to imply, of course, that it is not appropriate for a thought or an action to rise up and say no in response to, say, injustice or abuse or unkindness. But this no, this response of thought or action to an event arises in the universal yes of awareness. in the unconditional and indiscriminate openness that we essentially are. This openness could be said to be the, the allowing or the welcoming of all experience. in referring to it as pure allowing. We uh, avoid the, the danger of objectivizing or reifying it as some kind of subtle object or state This allowing openness is never disturbed or agitated by anything that takes place in experience. Disturbing thoughts may arise in experience, agitated feelings may arise but they arise in this aware openness. We are free to identify ourselves with these disturbing thoughts and agitated feelings or to know and feel ourselves as this completely allowing openness. If we identify ourselves with every 
passing thought and feeling, we will be easily hurt or upset. We will feel diminished or aggrandized by things that people say to us or about us. But if we understand and feel ourselves as this allowing openness, these words just float through us without leaving a trace on us. We simply remain as this inherently peaceful presence. This allowing or welcoming presence does not need anything from experience. It, it lacks nothing. It is complete in itself. Thoughts and feelings of lack may arise within it, but they do not arise on behalf of it. This inherent absence of the sense of lack is the experience we know as joy or happiness. But it's very important to understand that happiness, like peace, is not a feeling. It is not an emotion. Happiness is not simply one of numerous emotions that alternate one another in our experience. One moment happiness, then grief, then loneliness, then peace, then excitement, etc. Happiness is not a feeling. It is not an emotion. It is the background of all feelings. That ever-present background may seem to be obscured by our feelings. Like a screen may seem to be obscured by a movie or the sky may seem to be obscured by the clouds. It is only when we wrongly imagine that happiness is a temporary feeling, that we believe that it comes and goes, and as a result we feel that it is something that needs to be sought, something we believe that we may find in the future. If we are seeking happiness, we by definition feel that happiness is not present now and that it may be present in the future. And something that is not present now and may be present in the future can only at best be a temporary state. To search for lasting happiness is a misnomer. Happiness cannot be found, it can only be recognized. To 
search for happiness is to deny its presence. The search for happiness is the veiling of happiness. If we are searching for happiness or searching for enlightenment, which is the same thing, we betray the fact that our happiness is still invested in the content of experience. If any experience still holds the promise of happiness or indeed the promise of disappointment. This again betrays the fact that our happiness is still invested in objects, substances, activities, events, relationships, etc. When we acquire the object or merge with the person our seeking does come briefly to an end. And as seeking comes to an end, the ever-present background of happiness shines. But it would be a mistake to attribute the happiness to the object, the substance or the relationship. liberate happiness once and for all from its connection to or dependence upon what does or does not take place in experience. I read a, a story recently Three year old woman whose husband of 60 years had recently died. And as a result, she was moving into a, a residential care home. And when she arrived at the home, one of the staff welcomed her and took her to, to see her new room. And as they were getting into the lift, the elderly woman said to the nurse, I love it. What? replied the nurse. My room replied the elderly woman. But you haven't seen it, said the nurse. That's got nothing to do with it, said the elderly woman. Her happiness was prior to experience. It was not dependent upon experience. liberate objective experience from the impossible task of producing happiness for you. Withdraw from your friends and from the world the demand or expectation that they be a source of happiness for you. Happiness is our nature. It is not a feeling.
when our search for happiness in objective experience comes to an end and our nature of happiness shines, there may be a corresponding relaxation in the body or expansion in the mind and these will be pleasant but temporary experiences side effects in the body and the mind of the shining of our true nature these side effects will inevitably cease if we equate them with the experience of happiness we will think that happiness has vanished all that has vanished are the pleasant side effects that may or may not accompany the revelation of happiness. Do not expect the world to bring you happiness. Bring your happiness to the world. Simply understand and feel yourself to be this openness. Face life as this openness. Permit in yourself only those thoughts and feelings and activities and relationships that arise on behalf of this openness and its inherent qualities, if we can call them qualities. And if other thoughts and feelings arise, or you find yourself engaged in other activities and relationships that do not arise on behalf of this openness and its qualities, then rather than pursuing them, investigate them. Try to find the self on whose behalf they arise. And in this way allow them to dissolve naturally, effortlessly in this understanding. This guided contemplation will come to an end but our inherent openness, this allowing, welcoming presence never comes to an end. Simply be that knowingly in the face of all experience. And allow your thoughts, feelings, activities and relationships to arise on behalf of this presence, to engage in activities and relationships on behalf of this presence. So that this presence flows out from the inside of us and communicates itself, shares itself celebrates itself in all of our activities and relationships. <laughs>